Nisapila <laughs> Kanjan, Mobi Tabantaba indigenous, Nabantaban is the two as indigenous. See Landy Leg, a man, she says, they could see Tabel and I see Fagisin to this Tabel, as nice Polish is a very serious pimp, a pimp. Hey, Ninga Tinaman, I'm going to come to you in. Come to you in. My instrument is seen to see our boys and over Amania Isla, Gusseli was ego. You call Mute Salaganji. Over in Enzele Kalangayo. Who says I'm not going to wait? Who says I'm not going to wait? 
Instrument your mamma, Ingo, my own mamma, the walk ping one as changing. Go to no man, a match on a man and you got an idea to a phone. I'm not going to be 
Hey, Babu Victor. Job. Sami, 
Sihle, ugu hamba wami, guhle, isito sam. Sihle, ibalalam, lihle, inangintu ndo futi gimuhle. Sami, Sile, Zade, isn't all of her beautiful? She was looking at the parts that make up the whole, but all of her is beautiful. Her renditions were beautiful. Jobe was beautiful. So thank you very, very much, Zadi. And we nearly thought she was not going to join us, because if you look carefully, you will know why. So we really appreciate the fact that she is here with us today and rendering these beautiful, beautiful songs of Princess Makogo. Thank you very much to you, my sister Zaudi, and to Jobe. You will remain on stage. We are about to, ladies and gentlemen, welcome our guests that will be seated on stage. And as they enter, I will announce them, and I will kindly request that you stand as they come in and take their seats. I am waiting for the queue on my left, but I hope that you've managed to read through the brochure on the foundation, its launch, its objectives, and we've got big things for this foundation for the future. And I hope that we can rely on the support of many or all of you to ensure that the objectives that we have set out for a great legacy are a reality. So please, ladies and gentlemen, I will request you to kindly stand as we welcome on stage His Excellency, former President of Nigeria, General Obasanjo. Welcome, sir. As we welcome the Chairman of the Foundation and President of the IFP, Honorable Velenkosini Klavisa. I see he's brought his fans uh, with him uh, today, <laughs> Bulawayo. You could 
be seated and then I will sort of make you stand again. I think you need the exercise as well. <laughs> it happens to us in Parliament in Davazita, you know that. We start feeling sleepy, we stand up, we sit, <laughs> take a point of order just for the sake of doing it. <laughs> no point of order today, I'm not taking anybody and I'm glad nobody is in red today. <laughs> I would have looked the other way. <laughs> So now I can ask you to please rise again as we welcome uh, on stage His Excellency Prince Butelezi Shanga. Thank you very much, Mazui, for that. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as we welcome His Majesty, the King of the Mazulu Nation. Wena Wendo. Wena Wendo. Wena Thank you very much, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you to His Majesty, who is meeting in Kosi Mandela and in Kosi Holomisa at the moment, and uh, to all our distinguished guests, former President of Nigeria, Your Excellency General Obasanjo, His Excellency Prince Butelezi, President of the Chairman of the Foundation and President of the IFP, Honorable Shavisa, Prince Ntutugo, who is seated on my left, Butelezi, the son of His Excellency, welcome to all of you, and welcome to all of you members of the Royal House, 
mayors, councillors, captains of industry, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed an honour and a privilege for the Prince Mangosutu Butelezi Foundation to be hosting this first inaugural annual lecture. And we are very proud of the fact that we have Africa's statesman, none other than former President of Nigeria, General Obasanjo, to deliver that annual lecture. Thank you, sir, for acceding to our request, for flying down and for being with us here on this very, very important occasion. Thank you. May I all again ask you once again, please, to rise as we play the national anthem of our country, South Africa, which we are very proud, followed by the anthem of the African Union, the AU.
Thank you very much. Good day once again, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Naren Singh. I am a trustee on the Prince Mangasuru Bhutalezi Foundation, and I have the pleasure and honor of being the director of programs today. I would now like to invite the Right Reverend Bishop Nkosinati Ndwandwe, the Anglican Bishop of Natal, to lead us into devotions, Reverend. And as the Reverend comes up, Your Excellencies, I think I must be the first one to admit, and I think I'm in good company when I say this, that we really have to learn the words of the anthem of the AU. We are proud Africans after all. So I hope our ministers from government that are here will ensure that the departments of arts and culture have an aggressive program so that the citizens of South Africa, who are part of Africa, also know the anthem of the AU. It's a beautiful anthem, and I think we need to know it. The Right Reverend Bishop in Kosinati Ndwandu. Mangale Nguti, all protocol observed. Ngoba Angfun Ubang and Magin Ningasa Hambing and Lelefanelegil I would like to read from the letter to the Romans, chapter eleven, beginning at verse thirty three. All the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable are his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has given a gift to him to receive a gift in return. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. I have been asked to say a prayer, but you know when you are asked to say a prayer without saying a couple of words. People do not feel that you were there to pray. They feel you were there just to fulfill a duty. So for, pardon me if I say a few words. I want to situate today's words to what is going on, to what is happening. The context of the reading that I've just read is Paul's letter to the Romans talking about the situation of the Israelites who, because of their disobedience, Paul says, God opened the gate for the Gentiles. And because they were disobedient, not that God has rejected them, but he opened the gate for the Gentiles so that the Gentiles were welcomed into the family of God. And Paul is now looking at the greatness of God. Now, Zeta, I want to say, I'm looking at the greatness of God, the God who walked with you, the God who knew you before you were born, the God who sustained you in the midst of everything that you had to endure as the leader in our country. That is where I am looking at these words when I say all the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. And I want to move on and say, when you reach the verse 36, it says, for from him, which means God is the source your life 
originated with God. He is the source of everything. Whatever happened through this life, you derived your own being from the one who created you. And then it goes on to say, through him, all things exist. You were able to, you were sustained by the one who is the source of life. Impiloyako ikeleze isuga guye. And then it says to him, all things will return. All of us, at some point, we will be called back to our God. But this is the God who is the source of everything. He is the supreme purpose of all things that exist. That is why he says, and to him are all things. God is the beginning, the middle, and the end of all things. Everything, everything comes from him. Everything continues. By him, everything finds its ultimate purpose in him. This reminds me of one of the sons of Africa, St. Augustine, who once said in his prayer, Lord, you have made us for yourself, and our souls or our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. What an awesome God. Many wise people have tried to describe this God. Some say he is sovereign, he is almighty, omnipotent, omniscience, omnipresent, infinite, eternal, and immortal. But no list of adjectives could ever ad adequately describe the immenseness of our God. He's bigger than our biggest words and grander than our grandest conceptions. He is more powerful than we know, wiser than all the wisdom of the wisest men and women. His love is beyond human understanding. His grace has no limits. His holiness is infinite, and his ways are past finding out. He is the one true God. He has no beginning and no end. He created all things, and all things exist by his divine power. Who would have known? That is it. Oguti, on this day, you will still be here. Some of us were young when all the challenges that you faced, when we, we read about all the challenges you faced, and here you are, because God is greater than everything. And we praise God for that. And I want to end up by that verse where Paul says, for from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Lord, it is with gratitude and thanksgiving that we gather here today for the first annual lecture dedicated to your servant, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi. Lord, you knew him before the Butelezi family, before the tribe, before the nation, the Zulu nation knew him. You have been there ever since, even during the tumultuous times in the history of South Africa. Thank you, Lord, for giving South Africa such a role model. Thank you for the magnanimous role he has played in the history of this country and the history of the Zulu nation till now. Lord, it is fitting that we and generations to come should be given a glimpse of who he is. We also give you thanks for those who shaped and supported him to become the person that he is. 
his late mother, Princess Magogo, his late wife, Princess Irene, his children, the Butelezi tribe, the IFP, and the Zulu nation. And so, Lord, with gratitude and thanksgiving, we ask you to bless this gathering and his excellent Excellency Dr. Uba Sanjo, who will deliver the lecture today. We ask this through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the Right Reverend Nkosinati Ndwandwe for those readings from the scripture and for making it so apt to those of us that are living. Forgive me, Your Majesty, Your Excellencies, if I'm going to resist the temptation to mention all our guests here this afternoon. There is an item on the agenda that deals with that, and I will leave it to those persons that are going to do that. Save for us to remember that uh, Today is a very, very important day in the South African calendar, 21st of March, Human Rights Day, where we remember those that were massacred in the Sharpeville Massacre. But I, I would like all of us to rise and remember all of those who lost their lives and sacrificed so that our country can be what it is today and even be better in the future. So let us rise for a moment and remember everybody who lost their lives and also have in our prayer those who continue to make sacrifices to make South Africa a beautiful country that it should be. Thank you very much. May their souls rest in peace. It now gives me great privilege, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, to invite the chairperson of the Prince Mangosuthu Butelezi Foundation and president of the IFP, the Honorable Venen Kosini Tlavisa, who is also leader of the opposition in the KwaZulu Natal legislature, to deliver his welcoming address. Bulawayo. His Majesty the King of Amazulu Nation, His Excellency Umduana Wapindangene, His Excellency Dr. Obasanjo, the former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellencies, High Commissioners and Ambassadors representing different countries in this gathering. Amakosi Asendlunkulu, members of the royal family, fellow members of the board of trustees of this foundation, distinguished guests, members of the media, and those joining us online via the live stream. Good afternoon. It is my great honor to welcome you on behalf of the Foundation's Board to the inaugural Prince Mangosuthu Telezi Foundation Lecture. The Foundation is honored and grateful that you accepted its invitation to come and grace this special occasion. His Majesty, the King of Amazon Nation, we are grateful that His Majesty the King is with us to honor this historic day where the giant of Africa, Dr. Olisagun Obasanjo, will share his knowledge of the great son of Africa, Umduana Bawapindangen. I know that all the great men and women who are present here today 
are lifelong admirers of the foundation's namesake, His Excellency, Prince Mahosutu Butelezi. He is a man of the utmost integrity, who has dedicated more than 70 decades of his life to the service of the people of South Africa. Prince Mangusu Tuptelezi is a multifaceted individual who has excelled and inspired in all his many roles as a traditional prime minister of the Zulu monarch and nation, and as an acting president of the Republic of South Africa more than 22 times, and also as a minister of home affairs, as a chief minister of the former Wazulu government, as a liberation stalwart, and as the founder and the leader of Inkata Freedom Party, and also as a former chancellor of the University of Zululand, as a conservationist, as a man of faith, and as a true servant of the people. The Prince Mangusu Tuptelezi Foundation, which was launched in September 2022 here at the ICC in Durban, exists to uphold, promote, and preserve the legacy values and principles of His Excellency, the Prince of Wapindangene, in the daily lived reality of South Africans and the people of the world. As the foundation establishes its roots and grows, we will be pursuing the 13 objectives that honor Prince Butelezi's legacy. Each of our board members is dedicated to steering specific projects linked to these objectives. As the board of the Prince Mangusu Tuptelezi Foundation, it is our privilege to participate in these worthy initiatives, including those that promote peace through negotiations and the non-violent resolution of conflicts wherever they occur, as well as to promote reconciliation, social co cohesion, multiculturalism, and unity in diversity with the objective of nation building in order to heal the wounds of the past and secure a shared future in which the rule of law prevails and equality is upheld. The foundation will also promote education as a priority and a fundamental right to support research and innovation and to increase responsible mentorship. We will advocate equality, particularly gender equality, with an emphasis on empowering the most vulnerable members of the society. Further, we will champion the human rights and strengthen the institutions that protect human rights. This includes honoring and upholding the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa and promoting democracy and constitutionalism as the best guarantors of freedom. Through the Foundation's work, we will pursue good governance and moral leadership and hold those in leadership position to account for principled behavior, and utmost integrity. We will also support conservation initiatives that preserve our natural heritage and enhance sustainable living. The 
principles of self-help and self-reliance will also be actively promoted with a particular focus on food security. Another essential objective for the foundation is to pursue the development of legislation and other means to enshrine and promote the role, powers, and functions of traditional leadership within communities. The foundation will also promote social and economic justice for all the people of South Africa, as well as to promote the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, multi-party democracy, transparency, accountability, and the, principle, and the principle of subsidiarity in governance. And lastly, we will strive to champion the provision of quality health care, medical innovation, and accessibility of health care services to promote the physical and mental well-being of all the people of South Africa. The foundation will make every effort to create a world in which every individual is empowered to reach their full potential, whether working on their own or collectively with others. Our lecture today, the first of what is to be an annual foundation event also provides us with the opportunity to hear from another exemplary elder statesman, the international icon who has lived a life in service of the people much like the Prince of Wapindangen. We are deeply honored to have His Excellency Dr. Obasanjo, the former president of the Federal Republic of, J of Nigeria as a today's keynote speaker. It is a great privilege to welcome you, President Obasanjo, here today, and we look forward to your address as a man who has lived a life of worth of praises, admiration, and emulation particularly in your pursuit of peace in Africa. I trust that you will enjoy the day with us and find much inspiration. May we all appreciate this rare opportunity to learn from two great men who have made their mark and changed their respective countries our continent and the world for the better. I bid all of you a welcome to this special occasion. Thank you, Program Director. Thank you very much, Honorable Shabisa Bolawayo, for the welcoming address. And I'm sure members of the audience, as I had said earlier on, and thank you for going through the objectives of the foundation. The objectives are also, uh, you can see them dotted around the hall and they are in your files. And I'm sure you would realize that for the foundation to meet, meet its objectives and honor the legacy of a great, great, great individual, we will need your support. Moral, financial, and otherwise. We'll need all your support to be able to meet the objectives of the foundation, because I'm sure you also want to be ones to say, we also contributed to the legacy of a great, great South African. And then it's uh, also no wonder that today we are celebrating this annual lecture or having it delivered at the Nkosi Albert Lutuli Convention Center, because Nkosi Albert Lutuli was the President General of the African National Congress, from 1952 until 1967, and a great friend, a great friend of His Excellency Prince Matulesi. And this center is named after him as well. So thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Shabisa, for the welcome. He, last night I heard something about an appetizer and, and the full course. 
And I think what uh, um, Honorable Tabisa gave you was the appetizer in words. We want you just to take a look at the screen, and we have a short video, uh, two or three minutes, uh, which deals with the launch of the foundation which uh, Honorable Tabisa spoke about in September last year. So we are a very new organization. We haven't even started crawling yet, let alone walking. But I know with all of you by our side, we'll be able to run in due course. And after we've stopped running, younger people will continue running and keeping this legacy alive of all the great patriots uh, in South Africa. So could we have that video, please? People are trying to get it right. <laughs> Here we are. Thank you very much. That was just a glimpse. For you to learn more and know more, you'll have to attend more of our functions. So we're giving you the appetizer uh, today. The next item on our program is the acknowledgement of our guests. And the young gentleman that I'm going to call up can be described as uh, famous or infamous. Depends which way you want to look at it. Those that he interrogates for corruption and mismanagement of our finances may not like him, but I think the majority of South Africans do like him. He is the chairperson of the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, is a member of parliament, and he is also a trustee, Honorable Mkuleko Shengwa. Please come up, Mashasha. Hello. Oh, you been, oh, sorry. 
<laughs> Program Director, Your Excellency Dr. Olusega Nobasanjo, the former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Honorable the Prince of Wapindangene, the Chairperson of the Prince Mangosu Tubtelezi Foundation, the Honorable B.F. Tlabisa, allow me, Program Director, not to be repetitive that when I acknowledge you, please assume it and take it as my greeting as well for time uh, management, which mine is a very simple task. I will come back again, Chair, in the event that there are some of our dignitaries and uh, friends and guests that we would have um, not mentioned in this round, and I apologize uh, in upfront uh, for that. Your Excellencies, I would like to pay homage to the presence of His Majesty the King of Amazulu Nation, His Majesty King Misuzulu Gazulutin Silas Kool. I acknowledge I would like to acknowledge His Excellency the High Commissioner of Zambia to Malawi, who is also the son of that great son of Africa. Honorable KK, President Kaunda, His Excellency Panji Kaunda. His Excellency Ambassador George Zulu, who is accompanying His Excellency Ambassador High Commissioner Kaunda. I would like to acknowledge Her Excellency Ambassador Mao Bridget Mutsepe, who is with us. I acknowledge His Excellency Ambassador Carl Masters, who is in our presence as well today. I take this opportunity to welcome and acknowledge their excellencies and representatives of the United States of America, the High Commissions and Embassies, Serbia, Bulgaria, and India who are with us today. I would like to acknowledge the Honorable the Deputy President of the Inkata Freedom Party and Member of Parliament, Inko Sumza Mubtilis. The leadership of the IFP present is also the Secretary General, Honorable Ngobu, the Deputy Secretary General, Baba Mnwango, and other leaders of the NEC and National Council including the chairperson of the IFP in Guazulu Natal, Mr. Ntuli, and the chairperson of the IFP in Gauteng, Mr. Lamini, who so graciously ensured that he accompanies His Excellency Obasanjo safely to Durban. I'd like to pay homage to the Honorable Linkosi Upategi Leolomisa, the Deputy Minister of Justice and Correctional Services in the Republic of South Africa. Ah, the listen I'd like to acknowledge the Honorable Linko Suman Lamandela, who is also a member of parliament and chairperson of a portfolio committee on land and agriculture. Ah, Zulveli. <clears throat> Honorable Excellency, the former First Lady of the Republic of South Africa, Umamutobega Madiba Zuma. <clears throat> the former Secretary General of the ANC, Mr. Ace Mahashule. The Honorable Cyril Kaba, Member of Parliament, Chairperson of the Standing Committee on Defence, and also a member of the ANC NEC. Uh, I'm almost done, uh, TG. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Mr. Moses Tembe and Her Royal Highness Princess Ndandwe Sizwe. I'd like to acknowledge Mr. Vivian Reddy, who has been a great friend of this foundation. <clears throat> to acknowledge Ms. Ella Gandhi, who is present with us today. The former Director General in the Presidency, Dr. Cassius Lubisi. <clears throat> I would like to acknowledge the CEO of the Inkosi, Albert Lutuli. International Convention Center here in Deben, Umam Lindiwe, 
and we thank her very much for all that she does uh, for us and her team here at the ICC. As I said, uh, Chairperson, uh, I would like to, of course, the Right Reverend Bishop Gosnat Ndwandwe, the um, Bishop of Natal, who has led us in devotions this morning. I'd like to acknowledge Mr. Vasu Gounden, uh, who is also a great friend uh, of the Foundation, His Excellency President Tobasanjo, and from Accord. Finally, Chairperson, in this round of acknowledgement, it would be remiss of me not to um, introduce the trustees of the Prince Mangosu Tubtelezi Foundation led by our chairperson, Honorable Mr. Velenko Sinihlabisa, who is also the president of the Inkata Freedom Party. The CEO, Mr. Senzo Mfayela, the spokesperson and trustee, Reverend Musa Zondi, Prince Ntutuwayezu Ebtelezi, Princess Pumzil Ebtelezi, Princess Buisel Ebtelezi, I'll skip myself, uh, <laughs> uh, Mrs. Tembeni Gamatlopam Tetwa, Reverend Petros Ngubane, Mr. Tembangosi, Mr. Ishwa Ramlachman, Mr. Naren Singh, and my sister, Sis Lizo van der Meve. All those who have just listed now are the, far, are the trustees of the foundation. We recognize the leadership uh, of all political parties present who may not have acknowledged now. Amakosi Asen Lunkulunda Vezita, who are here in their great numbers, Sia Kulega Makosi, the business fraternity. Um, I would like to um, acknowledge the leadership of the structures of the IFP from branches, constituencies, uh, districts, provinces, and the National Council. I will come back again, sir, if there is anything else at this point in time. Those are the guests that would like to acknowledge. I thank you, Program Director. Thank you, uh, Honorable Sengwa. You'll come back again if you're given the permission to do so. Uh, <laughs> as I said earlier on, I'm the director of programs, so, so I direct everything. But I'm sure that he will pick up names of people that would have, uh, he might not have noticed because he was busy at the back, and, and we'll certainly mention uh, those distinguished guests that are here with us today. To put a life or service of 70 years into 10 minutes, is no mean task. But as a foundation, and with the help of uh, Mr. Anand Singh from Video Vision and uh, Anele, we are going to play a short clip of 10 minutes, which will give you a glimpse of the life of His Excellency Prince Butelezi. 70 years into 10 minutes. So I'll leave it to the technical team there, and I hope this time you get it right. Otherwise, somebody is going to take a point of order. To be dependent on God, and, and for that I, I owe that specifically from my mother. God made me a Zulu. I speak Zulu. I have a Zulu culture, and I'm proud. I don't apologize to you to, or to anyone for that. But I also live in a country called South Africa, which makes me South African. 
Prince Butelezi is among the few remaining veterans of the struggle against white minority rule. He formed the Inkata Freedom Party in 1975, reigniting the voice of oppressed South Africans. On the instruction of Inkosi Lutuli and Mr. Oliver Tambo, Butelezi led the KwaZulu government, undermining the apartheid system from within. But I can only say that we've been strengthened in our resolve, you know, in looking at problems of South Africa as South Africans rather than as, as fragmented parts of South Africa as the government proposed to do. After the release of all political prisoners and the formation of the CODESA, Principal Telezi represented the Inkata Freedom Party in the negotiation for a democratic South Africa. In my body, for my body and soul are together, I vow before you that I will never accept the kind of independence which Pretoria is offering us. Leader Mangosuthu Butelezi addressed thousands at his first campaign rally. With just six days left until the election, Butelezi says it will be a miracle if Inkata fares well. This was the moment that an anxious South Africa had been hoping for. The massive political breakthrough that would fully legitimize the elections and diminish the violence. This agreement is a leap forward. For peace, reconciliation, nation building, and an inclusive election process. At the inauguration of Nelson Mandela, Principal Telezi spoke of his warmth towards the new president. For instance, when we were sworn in yesterday, you know, um, he, he tried to cross the floor and I met him halfway to greet him and we hugged. That again was not acted, it was spontaneous because of that warmth and friendship which surfaces each time we're together. So you can rebuild that friendship for the future of the country? I don't see why we shouldn't. One of the great survivors of South African politics, Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi, is the only major party leader to have contested every election since apartheid gave way to democracy in 1994. The IFP, and in particular Dr. Butelezi, feel that they really are part of government and that they are um, considered uh, seriously, that they are playing an important role, which they are. He was a senior member of President Nelson Mandela's cabinet, serving as Home Affairs Minister for the first 10 years of democracy. I have decided to appoint the Minister of Home Affairs, Chief Mangosoto Butelezi, as the acting president of the country in our absence. So happy. Even in 94, the people of Natal, white and black, you know, gave me a victory. I, I won, under, under democracy, I won the province with a clear majority. Mm. And twice mm. this happened, mm. you know. This, that is the measuring rod you can use, that the people actually supported me at that time. It has been at the forefront of those seeking to build a better South Africa for all its peoples. Uh, Shanga has been a formidable survivor. We have destroyed all uh, the other leaders of the Pakistans, of the homelands. We have used every am ammunition to destroy him, but we have failed. And uh, he is still there. As I say, he is a formidable survivor. Prince Butelezi was involved in establishing the Mangosuthu University of Technology, Prince Mshieni Hospital, Itala Bank, the Guazulu Finance Corporation, a number of teacher training colleges, as well as the establishment of various industries. I think that God has been good to me because I'm an octogenarian. And of course, the years that I'm living now, I always say they're just bonanza years because the Bible says that a human being will only live for 70 years. So all these years I have up to my age are just a bonanza from God.
elder statesman and traditional prime minister to the Zulu monarch and nation. Buteleze remains a member of parliament where he is considered a voice of reason. As father, devout Christian, politician and traditionalist, he has led and is leading a uniquely full life. He has contributed tremendously to our democratic society. And I've dedicated my whole life to a better South Africa. For now, for tomorrow and future generations, that work has not yet been done. That is a challenge we face as a nation and as a country. Now you can understand, Your Majesty, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the need for the foundation and why we need to preserve this legacy for the future, for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, our great-great-grandchildren. And I know some of you are itching to get up and say, we want to be part of this, but don't do that now, do that a bit later, <laughs> so that you be part and join us in this foundation. I'm going to allow uh, Honorable Slengwa Mashasha uh, two minutes just to come and uh, round up uh, the introduction of guests. And then if Reverend Zondi could uh, ready himself to come up on stage, please. Thank you. Don't worry, I'll take less than two minutes. would like to acknowledge Ubaba Advocate Talimpofu, Ubaba the Honorable Ringo Madlingozi, Yakutula. Uh, Mrs. Slabisa, Ulungulum uh, and Tutuez, Mamuhale, would like to um, acknowledge 
that we just bong in Obo of Ukozi FM, Babu Alex Ntiano Fikakasi. And I think in my other jobs, I don't have a problem. The SAPC, Newsroom Africa, ENCA, 1KZN TV, BBC, and all media houses, present print and uh, online. Uh, we will further um, that, that list uh, later on. Faith-based organizations and faith uh, leaders, cultural leaders across the spectrum. Former MPs, some a class of 1994 who are present here, Ubabu Vipindlov, Ubabu Eric Lucas, uh, who are present uh, with us today, those founding MPs of our democratic dispensation and, of course, present MPs. Prolific writer, Dr. Lauvusi Shongwe, all-time friend of His Excellency, the Reverend B.K. Lutla, is also present with us today. Uh, Ebisa. Uh, we would like to Dabezita uh, Ubaba Hoshi Matthews, uh, who is also present uh, with us today. We'd like to acknowledge uh, Africa Media Online, who are doing great work with us of digitizing the work of His Excellency. And I would also like to um, acknowledge. Uh, Mr. Graham McIntosh, who is present, and Mr. Arthur Gwenin Kramer. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if there is a need again, 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 please take it that you've all been acknowledged from this side to that side, from this side to that side. We acknowledge all of you, go tando all cool, but if necessary, we will come back. Mr. Program Director, thank you very much. There is no third chance. Uh, I've given him two. <laughs> Tata uh, Machans, that was it. Uh, Reverend K. M. Zondi, uh, former member of parliament, 19, class of 1994, with me. Uh, we were called senators then, Skele. They should retain those titles. I don't know why they've dropped it. Uh, in America, they still retain it. Uh, he has been the secretary general of our party. He's now very, very involved. He's a chairperson of the KwaZulu Natal. Uh, wing of our churches here, and he's also a trustee and spokesperson of the foundation. So I invite uh, Nondaba to introduce President Olesegan Obasanjo. Nondaba. Program Director, Your Majesty, the King of Amazon Nation, members of the royal family present, Your Excellency, Prince Mangosu Tukutelezi, and Your Excellency, Dr. Olusegun Obasanjo, our guest of honor, Your Excellencies, the ambassadors and high commissioners present, Amakosi Asenjungulu present, the Right Reverend Bishop Kosinatin Dwandwe, who led us in the opening devotions, and other religious leaders present, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure and honor to have been called upon to introduce you this great son of the continent of Africa, His Excellency, Dr. Olusegun Obasanjo, who is our guest of honor and speaker at this inaugural Prince Mangosu Tubutele's lecture hosted by the foundation named after him. His Excellency General Olusegun Obasanjo is the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who has had an illustrious career of serving his country in different capacities over the years. He had a distinguished military career and was a member of the 1957 
United Nations peacekeeping mission in Congo and received the instrument of surrender on behalf of the Nigerian government from opposing forces in the Nigerian civil conflict that lasted from 1967 to 1970. President Obasanjo rose to the full rank of general and became Nigeria's head of state in 1976 and handed over power to a democratically elected government in 1979. As a freedom fighter and a political activist in his own right, President Obasanjo was on the forefront for the liberation of many countries in the continent of Africa from the shackles of colonialism and foreign domination and exploitation. The liberation of many Southern African countries, including that of South Africa, was always in his purview and political radar screen. In his first stint as Nigeria's head of state in 1976, and in the dark days of apartheid South Africa, one of his extraordinary initiatives was to invite His Excellency, Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi to visit the Federal Republic of Nigeria as a guest of his government. This he did to coincide with the granting of the first Bogus independence a la Pretoria to, to the Transkei on the 26th of October, 1976. When he was appointed as a member of the United Nations Eminent Persons Group, President Obasanjo championed the cause of South Africa's freedom and democracy. During the visit of the eminent persons group to South Africa, he was allowed to visit the late President Nelson Mandela in prison and used that occasion to promote peaceful negotiation to end apartheid and conflict between the ANC and Inkata National Cultural Liberation Movement, now known as Inkata Freedom Party. President Obasanjo was jailed for his pro-democracy views and beliefs in 1995 to 1998. And post his release from prison, he was democratically elected as Nigeria's president in 1999 and served for two terms. In 2008, President Obasanjo was appointed by the United Nations as special envoy for Africa and has since, in addition to that, overseen democratic elections on behalf of the African Union and the Economic Community of West African States, known as ECOWAS, across the African continent. Most recently, President Obasanjo has been instrumental in the peace process to end hostilities and conflict between Ethiopia and one of its regions, Tigray, by securing a ceasefire agreement and a commitment by the parties to pursue peace. President Obasanjo continues to serve the people of his country, Nigeria, and of the entire continent of Africa in the fields of education, agriculture, and leadership development, endeavors which are aimed at realizing the total emancipation of the people of his country and of the entire continent of Africa from the ravages of poverty, disease, and ignorance. About five or six years ago, President Obasanjo invited once again Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi to his hometown in Nigeria as a guest speaker to deliver a lecture hosted by his own foundation. Kupindana 
Quite clearly, these two statesmen share a lot in common and have over many years worked together hand in hand in search for lasting solutions for the ills that face the peoples of the continent of Africa and the world. In addition to their total commitment for the service of their fellow men, both are men of profound faith and humility. In 1987, as a mere lad of 27 years of age, I was privileged to attend the Lisbon Conference hosted by the then Portuguese Prime Minister, Professor Cavalco Silva, who later on became the head of state of the Republic of Portugal, together with these two distinguished African statesmen sitting here in front of us. That first encounter with President Obasanjo on that occasion left a lasting impression on me, which I will cherish to the end of my days. It is therefore an honor and profound privilege for me at this juncture to respectfully invite His Excellency Dr. Alusha Kunopasanjo to deliver the inaugural Prince Mangosu Tibutelezi lecture. With those few remarks, I thank you, Your Majesty, Your Excellencies, friends, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Your Majesty, Your Excellency, my dear brother, I better remember to say my dear senior brother, Members of the Butulisi family and clan, since we have had the opportunity of acknowledging the dignitaries here, I will crave your indulgence to introduce to you one of the inventions of Nigeria, which is on occasions like this, after we have gone over a long list of people to be acknowledged, then we end up by saying, all protocols observed. So you will, you will permit me to say all protocols observed. I want to thank my brother who give a bit of my CV in introducing me. Except to make him realize that when I was in politics in Nigeria, when I go to occasions like this and 
the people who want to introduce me are members of the opposition. They will start by introducing me as General Obasanjo, just to show that I am a dictator. <laughs> and if they are members of my own party, they will introduce me either as President of Basanjo or, or as Chief of Basanjo. Well, I saw that you do the, mix, the mixture, so which means you are neither on the side of, of those who are members of my party or on the side of the opposition because you refer to me as president and then you refer to me as general. So. <clears throat> I must, from the onset, confess that when I received the invitation to deliver this address today, I had a moment of hesitation, simply because I was not certain where and how I would begin My hesitation turned to trepidation when I carefully reread the invitation letter, which entrusts me with the responsibility of speaking to, and I quote, the key aspects of Prince Buthelis's legacy, which are pertinent to the present global debate. End of quotation. My anxiety, however, increased as I continued to read the invitation when I was ordered to focus on, and again I quote, servant leadership, courage under fire, and the path of moral values. End of quotation. In that moment of anxiety, my mind went back to March 6, 2019, when I was deeply moved by your following words, my dear brother. And I quote, I find it difficult to describe what I am feeling as I stand here this morning. There's a sense of tremendous joy knowing that we have the privilege of celebrating the 82nd birthday of His Excellency Dr. Obasanjo with this great man himself. I feel deep satisfaction in having the opportunity to be in Nigeria, knowing the ties of this country to my own South Africa. Those are your words. Now, my dear senior brother, my prince, when you express those kind words on the occasion of my birthday, when you were my guest of honor, little did I know that I would find myself in the same situation as you did then. So I will return the favor by repeating once again your words to me on that occasion. I find it difficult to describe what I am feeling. But I too feel a deep sense of satisfaction in having the opportunity to be here with you today, knowing not only the important ties 
that bind our two sister nations, but those that bind us personally. In other words, if I may try to be like General Idi Amin, I have come to retaliate. <laughs> Before I delve into my speech, allow me to pay my respect to the Zulu royal family and the reigning monarch, Your Majesty. As I find myself here in KwaZulu Natal, in the same month that back in 2021, the longest reigning Zulu king was laid to rest. As I pay my respect to the royal family, I am also reminded of the fact that the role of Prince Butelezi in protecting and guiding the late monarch is eloquently recorded in King Swathilini's praise songs, where his bravery and unwavering support to the young monarch's rightful claim to the throne is duly acknowledged. And when history once more called upon him to rise to the occasion of his role as the traditional prime minister, to assist the royal family manage the transition to the current monarch. He did it so unflinchingly. <clears throat> Honored guests, it is thanks to the prince for living such a long and illustrious life that when looking for aspects of his life to highlight, one is spoiled for choice. He has not only lived through very turbulent times in South Africa, but he has been an influential figure and an influential figure indeed. I could stand here and talk for hours. Don't get worried, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. Now, having overcome my hesitation and in finding a starting point, I was reminded of the South African and indeed the African philosophy of Mbutu. I am because you are. It is true that we become the people we are through the reality of the environment into which we were born. And so it is there that I shall start. In April 1906, Mr. Pixley Kasemi gave his moving uh, speech calling for the regenera uh, regeneration of Africa. In that speech, he said, and I quote, from the four corners of the earth, Africa's sons who have been proved through fire and sword are marching to the future golden door, bearing the records of deeds of valor done, end of quotation. I draw upon these words from Mr. Seme for two reasons. This great son of Africa was Chief Butelesi's uncle, Prince Butelesi's uncle. And they speak to Prince Butelesi's life in a prophetic way. Prince Butelesi is a son of Africa who has been proved 
through fire and sword and was part of the generation of leaders that marched to the golden door and nurtured in a better future for South Africa and indeed for Africa. Allow me to put these words in their historical context. Mr. Sema was speaking at a time when the Western Empire were at their peak and colonialism was well entrenched on the African continent. Despite the subjugation of the peoples of Africa, their spirit was not crushed. The European age of empire is littered with examples of Africa's undying spirit. Just 27 years prior to Mr. Semer's speech, the Battle of Isandiwana took place. In that battle, King Setshiwayo delivered a resounding victory for the Zulu kingdom and the African people. The Zulu forces outgeneralized, let me say that again. The Zulu forces outgeneralized and outsoldiered the British army camped at the foot of the Insandiwana mountain. The MP cried Ususu and urged forward in what was a battle for their most prized possession, the land of their forefathers. They delivered to the British one of the worst defeats in the history of their colonial expansion. I bring up this battle not only because it was a great victory for the Zulu people, but because the events of that day will foreshadow the century to come with the spirit of the Zulu warriors being called on time and again. After the defeat of British Empire took a more aggressive, after the defeat, the British Empire took a more aggressive approach, deploying more soldiers and ending any hopes that King Setshuayo had of a negotiated peace. In the year that followed, the apartheid government will face this same fighting spirit and choosing to meet this spirit for freedom with bullets and violence and for decades refuse to pursue a negotiated settlement. At the time of this British invasion, Prince Butelis's grandfather, in Yamano Butelesi was Prime Minister to King Setshuayo, a role his father, Mathole, also provided to the Zulu royal family. It is through his mother, the daughter of King Dinusulu, Princess Magogo, Kadi Sulu, that Chief Butlesi called Pixili Kasema his uncle. Through his mother, he has the spirit of the Zulu monarchy that fiercely fought British colonialism. And through his father, 
He has the spirit of selfless service to a cause of justice and human dignity. In addition, the spirit of a revolutionary can also be found in Prince Boutelesi. In 1912, his uncle, Pixili Kaseme, became one of the founding fathers of the South African Native National Congress, S-A-N-N-C, that, that gigantic fighter for freedom that will later become known as the African National Congress, ANC. His grandfather, King Dunisulu, was bestowed the greatest honor of being crowned the honorary president of the ANC. Distinguished guests, in the context of war and conflict, the first casualty is truth. These strong ties that Prince Boutelesi's family had with the ANC was a fact that would be forgotten in the 1980s and 1990s, especially by those who wished to drive a divisive narrative among the ranks of the oppressed people of South Africa. I bring up these family relations because these were the people who surrounded a young Prince Boutelesi in his formative years and who undoubtedly strengthened and shaped the man we have today. While it was an accident of birth that Prince Boutelesi found himself born into a family and community that was this illustrious, it also means that it was only natural that he would be counted among those who played a leading role in the struggle for the restoration of dignity for the people of Africa. I think we can all agree that Prince Boutelesi did not disappoint his forebears or their spirit of refusing to succumb to subjugation and that he truly embodied their spirit throughout the various stages of his political life. It was at the University of Fort Hare, one of the bastions of African leadership, that Prince Boutelesi began to make his mark in history. Together with his, comrade, with his comrades in the ANC Youth League, they were not disheartened by the 1948 electoral victory of the National Party and the implementation of the system of apartheid. If anything, they saw this as the most opportune time to agitate, mobilize, and organize under the clarion call of freedom in our lifetime. He rubbed shoulders with some of the giants from our continent, such as Dr. Z.K. Matthews, Mr. Robert Subuke, and former President Robert Mugabe. Meeting and interacting with such leaders could only have a positive impact on an individual. And much and must have provided a better education than one will be received in the halls of any university anywhere in the world. Unfortunately, due to his political activism, Prince Boutelesi 
was not able to complete his studies at Fort Hare. Through this action, Colonel Butelezi showed his commitment for putting the good of the people ahead of his own needs and a strong desire to right the wrongs of an oppressive system, despite it costing him his place at university. Even at a young age, Prince Butelesi displayed a bravery that many people spend their whole lives searching for. Indeed, it can only be an act of bravery, an uncommon commitment to jeopardize one's future, to take such a strong moral stand. And in that act of bravery, Prince Butelesi inspired others to follow in his footsteps. Prince Butelesi's life was to be filled with moments of bravery. Following his expulsion from Fort Hare, Prince Butelesi completed his studies at the non-European section of the University of Natal and was ultimately allowed to graduate at the University of Fort Hare. While in Durban, Prince Butelesi had the honor of being, member, of being mentored by Chief Albert Lufuli, Africa's first Nobel Peace Prize recipient, and a man who continues to command respect the world over. Prince Butelesi also forged friendships with the stalwarts of the South African struggle, such as Oliver Tambo, Walter Susuli, and Nelson Mandela, as he continued his political activities. Despite being engaged in political activism in Durban, and preparing to undertake his legal articles, Prince Butelezi was summoned to take on his hereditary position as Nkosi of the Butelezi clan, which took him back to his home in Malafasini and away from Durban. Once again, the prince showed a willingness to make the sacrifices that were asked of him as a leader. The role and inclusive ties one to the prosperity of the people who fall under the authority of that Nkosi. In spite of his young age, Prince Butelezi rose to the occasion and assumed the role of a protector and an advocate for his people. To be an Nkosi is no small undertaking. And to be one during the dark days of apartheid and with a government that was hostile to the legitimacy of such a position made the responsibility much harder. But such daunting circumstances did not deter Prince Butelezi from the obligations thrust upon him. Indeed, an easier path would have been to shack these responsibilities in favor of furthering his professional aspirations in the band. Prince Butelezi, however, recognize the importance of traditional leadership structures which needed to be preserved and cultivated. It will have been tempting to continue to protest against the apartheid government from the comfort of urban areas 
where access to resources was far greater and the impact of action likely to be far larger. But if one was not prepared to preserve traditional mechanisms of leadership and use them as instruments of political transformation, then a centuries-long fight against colonialism and Western imperialism will have been in vain. By taking up the role of Nkosi, Prince Butelezi was saying, I am an African and these are our ways. Distinguished guests, decades later, Prince Butelezi was once more called upon to serve in another capacity as leader of the then KwaZulu homeland. Prince Butelezi was elected by the Amakusi to lead what was in essence an attempt by the apartheid government to further drive a wedge within the oppressed peoples of South Africa and absorb itself of any obligation to care for the welfare of the majority of the population. Debates raged at the time about how best to handle apartheid's homeland system. Most of those who took up leadership positions in the homeland structure were branded as puppets of the apartheid regime, anti-revolutionaries, and any means of progress. Accusations, I am sure, Prince Butelezi had more than once. He was, at this stage, ostracized by the OAU. He was buffeted left, right, and center by the apartheid regime, the ANC, and the OAU. By creating the homelands along vague ethnic lines, the apartheid regime attempted to dilute any united black response to bring about effective change in South Africa. It cannot be denied that the position of chief executive officer of the Zulu Territorial Authority was created by the apartheid government, which until then was alien to the Zulu people. Therefore, accepting this position must not be taken out of its historical context. I can imagine that many people have considered that serving as the leader of KwaZulu afforded Prince Putelezi the opportunity to undermine the system of apartheid from within, and that he did. It was in the context of these trying times that the bonds of friendship were forged between myself and the prince. I remember the day back in 1976, although it was yesterday, when I hosted him in Nigeria. And let me just give the background to that historic visit to Nigeria. As I said earlier, AU has passed a resolution that we should have nothing to do with either Prince Utelezi or Inkasa. As a responsible member of OAU, I had to, and as leader of Nigeria, we have to 
obey the resolution of AU. But at the same time, I wanted to have Prince Boutilizi in Nigeria. I couldn't directly and personally invite him. So I got to the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, which, was, uh, which is a semi-autonomous government organization, to invite him to come and give a lecture. And he accepted to come. Of course, he could not come without paying me a courtesy call. And me receiving him paying me a courtesy call is not at my own invitation. So he came, he gave his lecture, and he acquitted himself at the uh, Nigeria Institute of International Affairs. And then, of course, he called on me. And he made me to understand a lot more than made the eyes through our discussion. Therefore, accepting this position must not be taken out of its historical context. And as I said, his presence in my country and his absence from South Africa, which also that occasion afforded him the opportunity to avoid attempting, uh, attending the institutionalization of the so-called independent homelands. So with one stone, we were able to kill two birds. It was a, we were able to have him in Nigeria, and we were able to have him absent in South Africa when he should be absent in South Africa. The Nigeria Institute, as I said, performed, I was used as an instrument or medium of getting Prince Kutelezi to Nigeria without us running foul of the AU, uh, OAU resolution. Another thing that, that is important was his will, willingness to honor our invitation with the full knowledge at the time that Nigeria was host to the ANC with former President Thabo Mbeki as its chief representative in Nigeria only attests to how he understood his place in history and how he regarded his, re his relations with the broader liberation movement. The 1980s was a tumultuous period the world over. There was the Chernobyl disaster, famine in Ethiopia, war in Sudan and Uganda, the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the collapse of the Soviet bloc. While all of this was happening at the bottom of South Africa, the apartheid government desperately clung to power as resistance in South Africa reached a crescendo. The Safe Kai became the fourth Bantustan to declare independence from South Africa. And those who operated in the homeland system faced increased criticism. The ANC General Secretary, Alfred Inso, criticized those who worked in the Bantustan system as having betrayed the sacred interest of the people. Despite having the opportunity to declare KwaZulu as an independent state, Prince Putelezi refused to do so, thus demonstrating 
his commitment to the struggle, not only in KwaZulu, but for the whole of South Africa. Recognizing that freedom in KwaZulu could only be achieved with freedom in South Africa as a whole. So committed was Prince Bertlesi to a free South Africa that when then President Botha offered the prince the independence of KwaZulu, he rejected it in all its entirety. Despite the pressure of living and being a leader, during the apartheid era and the growing criticism that the ANC, a partner in the struggle for the dignity of Africa, was leveling at Prince Putelezi, he had the bravery and the strength of character to continue down the path of freedom and had the foresight to know that KwaZulu independence would be judged poorly by posterity. In this context, it is regrettable that in the 1980s, we saw the buildup and the intensification of tension between ANC and Prince Butolesi's Inkata Freedom Party, IFP. This reality was lamentable for a number of reasons. First and foremost, because both Nkata and ANC were in pursuit of similar strategic political outcomes, albeit with different tactical approaches. The 1980, more than any other period, tested the commitment of the liberation movements to a united non-racial South Africa. The semi-state of emergency, followed by a full state of emergency declared by the apartheid government, was a desperate response to an escalating crisis for the apartheid regime. The violence in South Africa escalated during the decade and the need for strong leadership grew with every bullet that was fired. The 1980s in South Africa is a, a period I remember well. I do not know if you recall, but I visited South Africa in 1986 as a member of the Commonwealth Eminent Persons Group. And as I always say, well, that group of seven of us from the Commonwealth, there really wasn't anything eminent except that we give ourselves that name and then that next day. <laughs> At the time, the international community was still grappling with its response to apartheid. I visited former President Mandela on Portsmouth Prison, and I had a long discussion with him. And of course, we realized that the room they have prepared for us to meet must have been bugged. So he realized that, I realized that, he came to meet me because I was in the room before him, dressed with the ANC belt on a t-shirt. And um, we were able to communicate knowing that he would be sending a message, not through me, but through the machine that they have used. Um, to bog the place. And um, 
our discussion went on and he said, well, uh, if I'm released, I should not be, I should not continue to be a problem. I should be part of solution. Then I said to him, my dear brother, when you leave prison, not if, it is when, when you leave prison, your problem will not be a resolution of racial differences, but also resolution of ethnic differences as well. And Nelson Mandela got me perfectly and said, oh, you are referring to Comrade Butelezi. He is a freedom fighter in his own right. He didn't stop there. He said, the means are different, but the objectives are the same. Then I asked, can I give this message to him? He said, please, do. And when I came out of the place, I came to my brother. I said, I got a message for you from your brother in prison. He said, what is the message? I told him, he said, did he really say that? I said, he said it. Not only did he say it, he even said, I should mention it to you. I should say it to you. What I'm trying to say here, despite the narrative surrounding Prince Butelezi at the time, Nelson Mandela knew who Prince Butelezi was and knew that at his core, when one looks at Prince Butelezi, one sees a committed fighter for greater freedom in South Africa. I learned a good lesson from that position of uh, Madiba. And I reported, as I said, to my brother. During the period that IFP and ANC have their issues, Mandela never questioned the genuineness and the authenticity of Buthelezi as a committed freedom fighter. <laughs> During my visit in 1986, the group, that is the eminent person group, also met with members of the apartheid government, and what we ultimately found was a government that was politically stubborn. For instance, we met the president, who, in addressing us, came out with two big files. Obviously, one on Malcolm Fraser, the former Australian president, who was co-chair, and one on me and Nigeria. And then, when we were about to talk to him, he took the, he took the floor, and he was telling the story of what the white in Australia did to the uh, Australian natives. And um, he went from that to me and said what I did in Biafra. And I said, Mr. President, when we come to talk about Nigeria, you can say anything, but here now we are talking about South Africa and I will not take that from you. He kept quiet. Where else? Prince Butelezi continue to hold a principal stance of refusing to enter any negotiation 
with the government until Mandela and other political prisoners were released from jail. You recognize how paramount African unity was to the negotiation. He had the wisdom to see that unless Mandela and the ANC were free and able to participate in the negotiation, that process would not be sustainable. If in 1980s, if the 1980s were a complicated time, the 1990s were, I would prove, to be just as challenging. The negotiations were not easy and violence persisted. What we saw, among other things, was not only the intensification of attempts to end apartheid through negotiation, but a contestation of ideas for the future of South Africa and fighting for supremacy in a new order. In 1954, Chief Lusuli has said, and I quote, we meet here to express our deep resentment at the claim made by South Africa through its governments and parliaments since the Union to determine and shape our destiny without consulting our wishes and arrogantly to assign us a position of permanent inferiority in our land. Contrary to the plan and purpose of God, our creator, who created all men equal. And into us, and into us too, not through whites only. He breathed the divine spirit of human dignity. And so, we have every human and moral right to resist laws and policies which create a climate inimical to the full development of our personalities as individuals and as our development as a people. End of quote. These words are a demonstration of in Kosi, Albert Lutuli's strong sense of Christian faith, which often informed his political activism. In Kosi, Albert Lutuli set an example of demonstrating his Christian faith by devoting himself to the betterment of mankind and relentlessly fighting for the liberation of South Africa and Africa uh, in general. This is an example that I believe Prince Butelezi had followed well. I believe that his Christian faith, among other things, served him well during the final years of apartheid. The, ne the negotiations and the infancy of South Africa's democracy when he was called upon to be part of the process that sought to choose forgiveness over punishment and reconciliation over vengeance. The fact that South Africa did not descend into a full-scale civil war during the 1990s is one of the true miracles of our time. Chief Butelezi must be commended for his resistance to escalating tensions with the ANC. Not only did Prince Butelezi balk at the thought of civil war, but he was more than ready to sit around the table and offer his wisdom for the establishment of a new South Africa. The future that South Africa needed was one of reconciliation of all races 
an all uh, tribal group as without conciliation the development of a national will will have been almost impossible and democratic values will have been hard to establish. By sitting around the table with the oppressive apartheid government, the ANC and other political formations, Prince Butelesi was already demonstrating his capacity for reconciliation and a great mature, uh, maturity to put personal differences aside for the good of the wider community. The negotiation called for great leaders, and thankfully, there were people such as Prince Butlesi to answer that call along with some of his colleagues. While being able to sit across the table, Prince Butelesi also exhibited a position of principles during the negotiation, while some might say were disruptive to the negotiations, while others will see it for what it was. A man dedicated to the people he served. I talk, of course, of the uh, Prince's uh, insistence on Isilo, the Zulu monarchy, being part of the negotiation. During the negotiation, Prince Putulesi exhibited a capacity for compromise, but as accepting that South Africa would not be a federal state system in which provinces will hold greater power. However, on the issue of traditional leadership, Prince Butelesi took a principal stance. Today, today, experts write books and journal articles and hold seminars after seminar on the role that traditional leaders play in peace processes and conflict prevention in Africa. It seems that Prince Butelesi was well ahead of today's academics. Prince Butelesi recognized the importance that traditional leaders play in situations such as South Africa faced in the 1990s. Traditional leaders and in his case, the Zulu king had the unique ability to represent whole societies and communities during negotiation and the ability to sway public opinion one way or the other. Traditional leaders carry the spirit of generations gone, uh, gone by as custodians of a whole culture and people. Even outside of the continent, we see European kings and queens continuing to be held in high regard and to be seen as leaders of nations despite many no longer having any constitutional or legal authority. In the case of some, the rest of the world are told to look on European monarchies as world leaders and are made to pay attention to what they say. That is because monarchies bind people together as a nation, an ability more powerful than anything that can be found in law or written down on any piece of paper. After all is said and done, the, ne the negotiation produced a democracy 
for all South Africans to be proud of, and in fact, a democracy that all of Africa could celebrate. I mentioned earlier that South Africa's transition from apartheid to democracy and the avoiding of full-scale civil war, which would, in any other circumstances, have been an inevitability, was a miracle. But let me say it again, because it really was an awe-inspiring achievement. This miracle, however, did not just happen. It required patience, commitment, strong leadership, and a true desire for peace from all parties involved. It was a great act of providence that South Africa was blessed with so many leaders who were all active at the same time and who were able to exhibit the requisite qualities that produced South Africa's democracy. Whether people want to cast Prince Butelezi as the villain, as the villain or in the story or not, it cannot be denied that he was a significant player during a crucial period of South Africa's, Africa's and indeed the world's history. Most leaders, after a life dedicated to the struggle and liberation of his or her people, followed by a tumultuous period of negotiation, clouded in violence, bringing the country to the brink of civil war. But this case ultimately led to the advent of democracy in South Africa. Might retire to the rolling hills of KwaZulu Natal and enjoy some well deserved rest. But Prince Butelezi was not done just yet. Having fought so hard for the liberation of South Africa, Prince Butelezi became an active participant in the democracy he helped to shape. Prince Butelezi was also not done providing us with examples of servant leadership and exhibiting his capacity for reconciliation. During the visit of Commonwealth eminent persons group that I mentioned earlier in 1986, I asked Prince Butelezi what was Godin you on? Without hesitation, he replied, interest of all people of South Africa. And I said to him, we are all with you. When thinking of reconciliation in South Africa, most people, and rightly so, will talk about the leadership of Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. The great achievement of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission cannot be denied. And Archbishop Tutu's leadership can only be looked on with awe and respect. A lesser celebrated aspect of South Africa's reconciliation, uh, reconciliation efforts, however, was the government of national unity. As the Minister of Home Affairs, the government of national unity called on Prince Putulisi to walk side by side with other leaders. The ability to forge reconciliation with political adversaries and work together in the same government is not a gesture that posterity should overlook.
This government existed at a time when not only South Africans, uh, South Africans' expectations were high, but the whole world was watching the country's progress with bated breath. Will it or will it not? Not only did the government of national unity not collapse, it showed South Africa, uh, it showed South Africans that as a nation, they will work together to build a better future. And that those who were once enemies are capable of working together almost seam seamlessly for the good of the people. This is a great example for many countries in Africa and indeed the world as a whole who find themselves in a similar position to South Africa in the 1990s. Schengen, I recall vividly the time when you were once more called upon to show great leadership. When I lead an African observation mission for the 2009 election in South Africa under the auspices of the African Center for the Constructive Resolution of Disputes. You exhibited great statesmanship by leading your party towards accepting the electoral outcome, resulting in a smooth transfer of political power in a province where people had been had seen much suffering and pain. You accepted defeat gallantly and cooperatively in the best interest of the people. You eschewed violence and disorder. Ladies and gentlemen, while South Africa was able to avoid a civil war, many countries in Africa have not been so lucky, including my own country, Nigeria. What we very often see develop in many cases is a cycle of conflict and issues remain unresolved and leaders find it difficult to cooperate with those who yesterday they saw as enemies. Many leaders, be it at the national or local level, find it hard to reconcile with their opponents and difficult to work with them, even if they have signed a peace agreement that has ended the conflict. All too often, people seek to assert their dominance over their rivals instead of seeing an opportunity to work together for the good of the people they profess to serve. It is true that once a conflict is brought to an end, the real work begins. Key to preventing another conflict from occurring is addressing people's needs, providing basic services, addressing the root causes of the conflict, and making sure that people's expectations of peace are met. If their expectations are not met, then further conflict is bound to occur or occur. Prince, 
Kotelezi by serving in the government of national unity was key to contributing to South Africa's expectations for peace. We must do more to promote such actions on the continent. I believe that if more leaders in Africa had the strength and foresight of Prince Butelezi, then Africa might be able to free itself of the shackles of conflict. Then we will be able to silence the gun. Brothers and sisters, it is only by working with our political adversaries or enemies that our enemies become our friends and partners for peace. It is only through reconciliation that peace can be sustained. If there's any life that proves the veracity of these two statements, it is the life that Prince Butelezi had lived. To learn more about his life is to learn more about strong moral leadership, committed to principles, dedication to the people he serves and leads, uh, he serves and leads, and what is truly, it truly means to possess the traits of courage, bravery, and integrity. Prince Butelezi had the misfortune of being born during the trying times, but the great fortune to work among giants and the ability to become one himself. In, if, in this context, in this context, the Zulu nation, South Africa, and the African continent as a whole must continue to hold you in high regard. My senior brother, my friend, my prince, and an African leader I admire, I hold you in very high regard. You started your political life as ANC. Actually, ANC, member of ANC Youth League. You struggle separately later, separately, but together, as already I've mentioned in my encounter with Nelson Mandela in Postma Prison. And you formed, how you were part of the government of national unity. So, what came out is that the objective was achieved, but by different means, as Nelson Mandela put it. Now I hope we will be able to see IFP and ASC, ANC togetherness in the not too distant future. As we know today, The objective of dealing with apartheid has been achieved. But the objective of welfare and well-being of the people of South Africa has not been achieved. <clears throat> For that objective, we need commonality of means, not different means. So, I believe that you and your
colleagues of old, when you meet beyond the veil, there will be a great reunion. And that reunion will be, hey, welcome, Prince Butelifi. How did you leave things at all? And you will be able to say to them, I've made things better when you left. As I conclude, allow me to once more still and then slightly amend your words and say, when a leader reaches a certain age, people often talk about their legacy. The Prince Pangosulu Butelesi Foundation has been established to preserve your legacy in all the roles you have played in your very eventful life. You have rolled into one life, almost five or six different lives, into one. That special gift by God to you, I envy you. Eventful life as an activist, young student activist, a traditional prime minister to the Zulu monarchy and nation, a negotiator, acting president of the republic, member of parliament, minister of home affairs, chief minister of the former KwaZulu government, a liberation stalwart, and a freedom fighter in your own right. <laughs> Chancellor of the University of Zululand, a conservationist, and a man who fears God. A transformational African leader and a true servant of his people. <clears throat> My dear brother, senior brother, I was looking at everything that you have achieved, everything that could be credited to you, and I said, well, look, this my brother is beating me in everything. <laughs> Could I have anything to beat him in? Then I discover that I have something to beat you in. As I said to President Nelson Mandela, at one time, he, myself, and President Kenneth Kaunda sat down, quietly the three of us. Then I turned to President Nelson Mandela and I said, Madiba, he said Ulu, that's why he refers to me, my first name, Ulu. He said, um, I said, Madiba, you know, you are senior to me in age and everything, but I am senior to you in one thing. So he said, Olu, what are you senior to me in? I said, President Kaunda and I, we are senior to you. He said, well, what are you and KK senior to me in? I said, you see, you went to prison before you became president. <laughs> we went to prison after we have been president. So you are a prison graduate. We are a prison postgraduate. <laughs> My dear brother, you have no prison in your record, so I'm senior to you in that. <laughs> Schengen, your legacy has been cast in gold. 
it will outlive you through many future generations. But it's not yet a closed book. Your legacy is still being written. The annual lecture to be serious, as I've been told, that is being established today will be part of your written legacy. You are going to leave an enviable heritage. We thank God for the totality of your life. Thank God for your life. Thank you all for listening to me. That was a history lesson that no history book is going to give you. And I think those of us that are here are very privileged, Your Excellency, to have heard you say the things that you did. Because, like I say, no history book will give us that kind of history of a personal relationship, not only with Prince Butelezi, but with other great African leaders, including Tata Nelson Mandela. So thank you very, very much for being the trailblazer. You set the pace for this annual lecture. I think next year, for those of us who are around, uh, Mr. Chairman of the Board uh, of Trustees, we've got a hard act to follow, uh, to find somebody else with your caliber to deliver the second annual lecture of the Prince Botelezi Foundation. We really appreciate what you said, we really appreciate your time, and we really appreciate the fact that you are here to, to say so many nice things about your dear brother, and we'll call you older now for now because you're a postgraduate. <laughs> dear ladies and gentlemen, you, it now gives me great pleasure to very, very, very respectfully, because I don't think many of us have this opportunity, but I did say early on that I am the director of programs. So certain responsibilities have been thrust on my shoulders today. I would respectfully request His Majesty, the King of the Amazulu Nation, to deliver a message on this occasion. And thank you, sir, Your Majesty, for being here. When I went low. When I went low. By it. By it. Thank you. When I can't get one for over ten years. But I know only one was over ten years. But I am quite a little Thank you. You can take a seat. Your Excellencies. Royal Highnesses, Davizita, Dunankuluga Zulu, Prime Minister of the Zulu Nation, Royal Families present here today, Royal Highnesses, particularly our neighbors, friends, and I probably would say my colleagues, 
Inkosu Patagi Len, Nkosi, Umanda Mandela. Welcome. Honorable members, members of the diplomatic corps, distinguished guests, the church and the clergy of the church, media present, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Today, for me, is a very, one of those very historic days. It is in the sense of my pride and emotion that I received an invitation to be a part and a parcel of this today, a very historical event, sharing it. I wish to thank His Excellency, former President of Nigeria, Dr. Obasanche, Your Excellency, for taking this opportunity to be present at this inaugural event for the Prince Mangosu to Butilese. Today, I commend the excellent idea of the Butelezi Foundation of inviting His Excellency Dr. Obosanche, as in doing so, they have correctly collect, co <coughs> located Umduana's contribution within and outside the African continent. Indeed, although Umduana by birth, by being to us and in us a Zulu, a, a Zulu and also a son of Africa and a son of the soil, Dabezita. Today we celebrate and acknowledge the life and contribution that one of our greatest African leaders in the Southern Hemisphere today is recognized through his foundation. His contribution to the up to Africa's collective struggle and, conscious, and consciousness movements places him in the midst of special leaders of, of yesteryears who had a vision for a free, developed, prosperous, disease-free, and united Africa. Nabizita. This continent, unfortunately for Africa, is incomplete without yourself, the Zulus, and South Africa. The history of the, of the continent is incomplete without the comp contributions of Umduana Wapindangene. His contributions to the development and protection of Ubukosi in Guazulu Natal and in general is undoubted. In the Zulu history graphy, he is known and respected as a prince and prime minister who served three kings that's including myself. The contribution, Dabizita, your contribution continues to date, although 
as always, you remind us we know you are a true nanogenarian. And I busy it. Those of you who don't understand the word, you can go and look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> Thank you. Today, today because of your contributions in the visitor, um, and myself, and as a coll collective, all of us, the world respects the, the Zulus, and we have a history to be proud of, by the way. That's why, why we are South Africans. We are Zulus, and we hold on to that our, uh, with all our heritage, our identity, our disposition, personality as a nation because of yourself, Nabizita. Thank you for that. In in Isizulu, gonke loku kutiwa gushaiwa etunzayo. In English, this means he who does good invites trouble. In Pilin Jalo, in Towas and Avisilo. I know, thank you to everyone here today. Davizita, I know that today is not a traditional event. By the powers invested, but by the powers invested in me as your king and yourself as my prime minister, Dabezita, Makeba, I hereby give you one last very important task as prime minister. One last important task, Dabezita, as prime minister to the Zulu nation and to me, as of this day, I instruct you, Ndabezita, to organize a meeting of elders while on my side I will organize a meeting of the youth. In these two meetings, we are grateful, Ndabezita, with your synergy, we would like, since God has blessed us with you till this time, to contribute to this cause, where the youth will put together with the elders to determine the future of the Zulu nation. Dabezita, I rely on you and a few others, Izinguevu, to put this together and we will do it in honor of yourself and the late king Isilo Samabanda Umdo Umban, the visit. Thank you so much, everyone. With these few words, I thank all of those who had the excellent idea of recognizing someone who was so endable and contribution. Why is, while he is still alive, we have the opportunity to get the blessing as a nation of the Zulus and as a South Africa Aye. to thank Umtanoa Pindangene for his contribution to our beautiful and great country. Ndabezita, 
this and other plans of the foundation are a true testimony of the contribution of Umduana to the nation and to the continent as a whole. And thank you for that, Makeb. No, to Umduana, we express our deepest gratitude for the leader and the parent he has become to each and every one of us as South Africans. And by this, I close off. Thank you so much for inviting me and thank you so much for supporting by being present here today for everyone that's put a contribution to make this event possible. Security right down to the catering. Thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you. But but in Bosia, Marcos, but in Bosia, Marcos, but in Bosia, Marcos, but in Bosia, Marcos, we are members, but in Bosio, son, as we as a womb, when I went low. When I went low, my head Thank you very much uh, to His Majesty. We will thank him officially when, when, when he returns. He's just gone uh, for a small comfort break. And maybe there are others of you that uh, also need a comfort break. But I think we'll we'll have our Mazwi, are you still here? While we're trying to locate her and for His Majesty to return, let me once again remind our distinguished guests of the objectives of the Foundation. And thank you to all the speakers so far, including His Excellency, I won't say general, I'll say sir. I don't want to say general or president, I'll stay in the clear, <laughs> Excellency, <laughs> for supporting the objectives of the foundation. Thank you to His Majesty for supporting the objectives of the foundation. And I have no doubt that uh, all of you will, in some way or the other, support the objectives of this foundation. And there will be uh, a vote of thanks later on but uh, so far as the person directing this program, I must say that we as the foundation, including the chair, are extremely impressed at the kind of attention that we are getting from the audience. It means we've done something right, and it means that the speakers and the program we've put together is a meaningful one that has attracted your attention and encapsulated you uh, to listen to what has, is being said. So I don't know if we've still got Wazu, she's there. Give her a, a round of applause, she's excellent. Oh, I'll end up 
ekebana sengathi yabona wobuya phothulwa mtana munyo buye phina Sengati abona, ye guya pot 
Tulwa. Oh, 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 Gasa. Mwariani we, 
Maganeriawe Mariani Mariani Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I'm sure you will all agree with me that that was a delightful interlude. Absolutely delightful. A big round of applause again to Saudi. <laughs> Distinguished guests, Your Majesty, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached that item on the program, which is remarks and reflections by the man of the moment. And Your Excellency, it is your turn to make remarks and reflect on the event. His Excellency, Dr. Olusegun Obasanjo, the former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the great sign, our icon, the Deputy Minister, Ngozi Horomisa, our Dilizin Java, our Ngozi Mandela, Madiba, Azulveli, His Excellency General Kaunda, the High Commissioner of the Republic of Zambia, to the Republic of Malawi, His Excellency Ambassador George Zulu, the Ambassador Bridget Mansipe, the Right Reverend Dr. Kosnati Ndwande, our Bishop of the Diocese and other religious leaders, representatives of Parliament and our councillors and other dignitaries present.
members of the diplomatic corps, members of the royal family, Mr. Augustine Morris, and leaders of all parties present, distinguished guests. Sangalwez, Your Excellencies, what can one say in response to such an eloquent and thought-provoking lecture delivered by such an illustrious son of Africa? I can only thank Your Excellency, Dr. Obasanjo, for traveling to be with us today and for giving us the gift of, his, of your produced profound rather insight into the realities of our continent, both past and present. Above all, however, we appreciate your vision, sir, for the future. For it is the hope, more than anything else, that will sustain us in our pursuit of Africa's highest aspirations. In being the seventh of us, as people of Africa, for so many decades, Your Excellency has hardly any peers amongst us. It is humbling indeed to have such an eminent and respected African leader accept the invitation to deliver this inaugural lecture. More so because the invitation did not come from me, I would have been very shy to approach His Excellency to speak about my, our friendship and about our work. I've done so. Deliberately, for the sake of liberty, democracy, and justice, and about so much that this great son of Africa has done to serve all the people of Africa. However, the board of the Prince Mangosu Tibutelezi Foundation invited His Excellency to speak and receive his kind confirmation before they've informed me of this wonderful news. Of course, I was delighted, not only by the prospect of hearing His Excellency's wisdom, but by the opportunity to see him again. We were last in the Another's Company at His Excellency's 82nd birthday in Ogun State in Nigeria in March 2019, when he invited me to deliver a lecture hosted by the Center for Human Security and Dialogue of the Olusegun Obasanjo President Library. The theme was given to lecture your Majesty was colonialism, apartheid, freedom, and South, and South Africa rising. That was the topic. Even with a broad theme like that, I know how difficult it is to, to condense everything that could be said into the few things that must be said. I therefore applaud His Excellency for giving again, as usual, his, his pearls of wisdom. What he said here today is exactly what needs to be said, what we need to hear in Africa. Let us take heed and consider how South Africa might benefit from the renewed perspective that we have been offered today. I've been tremendously blessed in these tireless years of my life to spend time with several of the great men and women with whom I engaged in the Africa's liberation struggle. In the very year that His Excellency Dr. Obasanjo invited me to Nigeria, I was invited by His Royal Highness Nkosi Yamamkosi Mpezeni the fourth of Zambia to attend the 29-19 traditional ceremony. During that visit, arrangements were made for me to meet again with His Excellency, former President Kenneth Kaunda in Lusaka. And looking back now, I thank the Almighty for his intervention 
For not only would the COVID-19 pandemic shut down international travel just months after these trips, but there would certainly not have been another opportunity for me to see the late Dr. Kenneth Kaunda. President Kaunda is revered by all of us here for the risks and sacrifices that he and the people of Zambia made for our liberation. It is wonderful to know that we have in our presence today the son of the former president, the founding president of Zambia, President Kenneth Kaunda, His Excellency, Ambassador Panji Kaunda, who is himself an ambassador of the High, High Commission of Malawi, of Zambia in Malawi. Four years ago, on my 90th birthday celebrations, Ambassador Kaunda brought a beautiful message of congratulations from his father. We are pleased to have him with us again, together with His Excellency, Ambassador George Zulu, who did so much to arrange my last meeting with my old friend, the first president of the Republic of Zambia. Those two visits to His Excellency, Dr. Obasanjo and His Excellency Dr. Kaunda, were a balm to my soul. After decades of enduring an intense campaign of verification for accepting to lead the East Hile Wazulu government and for the founding of Inkata, my pain was finally lifted by Dr. Kaunda's frank account of history on that occasion. He declared that the frontline states and the ANC mission exile through Mr. Tambo had agreed in 1974 that I should be asked to found a membership-based organization within South Africa to reignite political mobilization towards freedom. There was, they felt no one better suited to the task, they said. They knew that I had accepted the leadership of KwaZulu on instructions of my leader and mentor, Nkos Albert Mvumbil Tuli, who together with Oliver Tambo urged me not to refuse, even though our movement, the African National Congress, rejected the homeland system. They believed that I could undermine the system of apartheid from within as part of a multi-strategy approach to our liberation struggle. That is the mission I'm proud to have accomplished, protecting not, not only the citizenship of black people in this province, but all black people in South Africa. I've got it. This, Your Excellency, I always say, is the genius of my leader, Albert Luchud. But that was his idea. President Kaunda and the frontline states knew that I was lo a loyal cadre of the movement, ready to take instructions from my leaders. And I did take instructions just as they anticipated. When I visited President Kaunda in 74 to thank him for giving sanctuary to all our exiles, he spoke on behalf of the frontline states, advising me to found a liberation organization within our country so that the struggle could continue on our own and while it was waged from inside by the Pan African National Congress. When my return to South Africa, upon my return rather to South Africa with Mr. Oliver Tambo's approval, I, f I found it in God. Despite all that this has been said against me, that is the measure of my loyalty. Even when gross propaganda was turned against me, when His Majesty, who happens to be my, my grandnephew, was speaking, it was difficult for me to, to hold back tears when I looked after the verification I've gone through. I remained loyal. My loyalty was to the cause of liberation through nonviolent means. It was the cause that my uncle, Dr. Pixley, Kai Sarasem, laid the foundation of, of Africa's 
all this liberation movement, the African National Congress, which my uncle founded, So I laid the foundation of Africa's oldest liberation movement. It was the cause that in Kosciuszko and Bishop Alpheus Hamilton Zulu impressed upon me, and it was the cause that I followed, regardless of personal cost. It is truly a blessing at this stage of my life to recall the heads of stage of Africa and throughout the world who warmly welcomed me during the liberation struggle because they knew my credentials and my, and my commitment to the cause. Regardless of what I suffered because of unjust lies from within the movement, I grew up in the truth so that the truth could not be hidden from Africa's greatest leaders. When I consider the awards I've received and the friendships I've, I've enjoyed, I'm reminded that truth always conquers at the end. It always emerges one way or another, and it cannot be suppressed forever. I want to thank Your Excellency, Dr. Abbasanjo, for telling us the truth today. It is only when we work with facts and truth that we are able to overcome obstacles, to solve problems and achieve our full potential. And that is my hope, not only for South Africa, but for the whole of this continent. More than a hundred years ago, Dr. Pixley, Kai Sarasem, delivered a speech in London, which Your Excellency quoted, that had been studied and quoted by scholars and leaders again and again. It was entitled, The Regeneration of Africa. In part, my uncle, Dr. Sema, said, the brighter day is rising upon Africa. Already I seem to see change dissolved her desert plains with red ha harvest, her Pessinia, Apicinia, and her Zululand, the seeds of science and religion reflecting the glory of the rising sun from the spires of their churches and universities. Her Congo and her Gambia, whitened with commerce, her crowded cities sending forth the harm of business, and all her sons employed in advancing the victories of peace greater and more abiding than the spoils of war." Unquote. I feel that Dr. Abbasanya's words today have picked up on that theme of Dr. Sam. They see a brighter day that will rise upon Africa. I'm humbled to know that we, Dr. Obasanjo, Dr. Count and I, have done our part to push back this darkness, and see that the sun rises again. I shall never forget for whatever is left of my life. What His Excellency Dr. Obasanjo did for me in 1976. I was not going to go for the independence in Umtata in 1976, and yet this great son of Africa sent four tickets for myself, for my wife, Irene, for my secretary, and for Mr. Tula, so that I could speak at the Institute for International Affairs in Lagos. I shall never forget it. He arranged for me to be in Lagos on the very day of the so-called independence. In fact, That's when I had met him before that as one of the eminent persons. I've been honored by Dr. Obasanjo's lecture today, as all of us, I'm sure, are. And I'm honored by Dr. Kaunda, 
words in 2019. There's no way for me to repay them. But I would like to honor them. Ladies and gentlemen, in his speech, our guide of honor spoke about my great-grandfather, King Kajwayo, who is the great-grandfather of our king. The king is sitting on his throne just now. This is very important. I think you must all listen. You must very listen to that. Because I think it's a very important thing. There's some serenity about it. Because King Kajwayo was the father of King Dinizul. King Dinizul's eldest daughter, Princess Harriet, married the Pixlisem, the founder of the oldest movement in Africa, the African National Congress. So I think that it's important for me to, to emphasize that. And because of that, I feel, Your Excellency, that because of this history, I've decided when I visited the castle in Cape Town where my great grandfather King Kajwayo was, was prisoned. They gave me a picture of King Kajwayo on the day he left for London, where he wanted to see. So it's a very historic picture by it. I thought that I should give this to the president, boss. It rejoins our history. King Kajwayo is the father of King Tinizuru. King Tinizuru is the father in law of Dr. Sema, the founder of the oldest movement in Africa. <laughs> African Nation Program. It was the very day. It was the very day he was going to to meet Queen Victoria, you know. I think this is, our history has come together today. Thank you. Your Excellency, I've asked the Prince Mangosu to Butele Foundation to have an annual award to be bestowed upon exceptional individuals whose life and work is dedicated to the advancement of, hum of humanity, peace, development, freedom, and democracy. There's, one, there's no one better to receive it, Your Excellency, from the Foundation than yourself as our icon and posthumously his Excellency, Dr. Kenneth Kaun. I would like to say, Your Majesty, I've had your commands to me as your servant concerning what you have instructed me to do today, and it shall be done according to your commands, Your Majesty. Before we present these awards, allow me in closing to express my deepest gratitude to the Honorable Mr. Velenko Sini Chabisa and the full board of the Prince Mangosuti Puchelezi Foundation, not only for making this one wonderful occasion possible, but for accepting the enormous task of continuing my life's work even beyond my own time. I, I, and I think there will be something remiss, Your Majesty, if I don't thank Nkosi, particularly Holomisa, 
and Nkosi Mandela for being present here today. I think that their presence has added a special luster to the whole occasion and also emphasized that we're, we're one people. Yes, we've, in this province, we have one king, but as African people, we're one people. And their presence has emphasized that today. I believe that all my colleagues, my comrades, my former comrades in ANC, permanent, <laughs> were, 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 invi were invited to, to come. So I, I, would like, I would like them to proceed. Can read, 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 read the passage, citation first. Oh, Dr. Antuzal. Thank you, uh, Mr. MC. Um, in the interest of time, I will just go ahead and read the citation all protocol observed. Uh, Ubuntu Butu, traditional African concept of the Nguni and Sotho speaking people of Southern Africa, which can roughly be translated as humanity towards others. Ubuntu Butu represent the full circle of life. The Ubuntu Butu Prince Mango Sotho Butelese Award is awarded annually by the, prime, by the Prince Mango Sutu Butelese Foundation to an exceptional individual or organization whose life and work is dedicated to the advancement of humanity, peace, development, freedom, democracy, and the environment. It recognizes servant leadership to humanity and promotes ethical, moral leadership in building a just and prosperous society. The 2023 Ubuntu Butu Prince Mangosu inaugural Prince Mangosu Award is presented to His Excellency President Olusegun Obasanjo. The 2023 Ubuntu Butu Prince Mangosu Butelezi is presented to, to, uh, to President um, Olusegun Obasanjo. President Obasanjo is an international statesman with a profound sense of duty and passion for conflict resolution and medi med meditation, mediation. President Obasanjo had a distinguished military career and was a member of the 1957 UN peacemaking mission to Congo and received the instrument of surrender on behalf of the Nigerian government from opposing forces in the Nigerian civil conflict, which lasted from 1967 to 1970. President Obasanjo rose to the full rank of general and became Nigerian, Nigeria's head of state in 1976 and handed over power to a democratically elected government in 1979. As a freedom fighter and a member of the eminent persons group, President Obasanjo championed the cause of South Africa South Africa's freedom and democracy. President Obasanjo was jailed for pro-democracy views and beliefs in 1995 to 1998, and post his release, he was democratically elected Nigeria's president in 1999 and served for two terms. In 20, 2008, President Obasanjo was appointed by the United Nations as special envoy to, for Africa and has since overseen democratic elections on behalf of the African Union and ECOWAS across the continent. President Obasanjo most recently has been instrument, instrumental in the peace process and add to end of humilities between Ethiopia and one of the regions, Tigray, by securing a ceasefire agreement and a commitment by the parties to pursue peace. 
President Obasanjo continues to serve the, pe the people in fields of education, agriculture, and leadership development, and steadfastly promotes the twin pillars of self-help and self-reliance. President Obasanjo has contributed to knowledge production and a schedule as, sorry, and as, and as a scholar has authored over 30 books covering various topics. On behalf of all people of goodwill around the world, the Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi Foundation thanks President Obasanyo for his life of Ubuntu. 21st March 2023, Deben, South Africa. If I may, with your permission, Director of Programs, read the second citation. I won't read about Ubuntu because we have covered that, what it means. The 2023 Ubuntu Butu Prince Mangosutu Butele's Award is posthumously awarded to Kenneth, Kaunda, Kenneth David Kaunda, the former president of the Republic of Zambia, in recognition of his, of his life of service to the African continent, his outstanding leadership qualities and integrity, as well as the un his unwavering commitment to the cause of democracy, peace, nation building, and reconciliation. I don't know if the audience could please, please indulge us. I think it's very important. I hear quite a bit of noise now. Thank you. President Kaunda led Zambia from British colonial rule to independence in 1964 and served as that country's president until 1991. He carved a path for the country's first democratic multi-party elections and became the second mainland African head of state to allow the three multi-party elections and to relinquish power peacefully after he had lost. President Kaunda founded the Kenneth Kaunda Peace Foundation in 1991, dedicated to the establishment of peace and conflict resolution on the continent. President Kaunda was a distinguished leader who in 1963 served as the president of the Pan-African Freedom Movement for East Central and Southern Africa, as chairman of the Organization of African Unity from 1970 to 1971, and again from 1987 to 1988, and the chairman of the Non-Aligned Movement, whose summit he hosted in Lusaga in 1970. The, his leadership permeated beyond the borders of Zambia, leaving an indomitable impression on the continent. President Kaunda political ideology of humanism embodied values of justice and equality, which served as a guiding principle for individual morality in society. His ideas on humanism placed a strong emphasis on individual obligation toward enhancement 
of the collective good of society. President Kaunda was a freedom fighter and founding father of the Organization of African Unity, which until today, in its current form as the African Union, still means a great deal to the African people. President Kaunda's greatest legacy is, is being the founding father of the Zambian nation. President Kaunda served not only his country, but the cause of freedom and democracy in our country and across the African continent. During apartheid, Zambia prevent, provided sanctuary to South African exiles, for which Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi traveled to Lusaga to thank President Kaunda. It was during that visit to him in 1974 that he advised Prince Mutelezi to found a membership-based organization to reignite political mobilization in South Africa, in South African soil. This culminated on the founding of the Inkata in Kulegwe Sizwe in 1975, which is today known as Inkata Freedom Party, IFP. President Kaunda was one of the first members of the champions for AIDS, for AIDS-free generation of Africa, a distinguished group of former presidents and influential African leaders mobilizing political leadership to end AIDS as a public health threat on the continent by 2030. He also dedicated time and effort to the AIDS response through his Kenneth Kaunda Children of Africa Foundation and through the Zambian ch ch chapter of the Brothers of Life campaign, which aimed to encourage healthier lifestyles amongst young men. On behalf of all people of goodwill around the world, and especially the African continent, the Prince Mango Sutubu Telezi Foundation thanks President Kaunda for his life of Ubuntu. Thank you very much for making those awards, Your Excellency, to very, very well-deserved gentlemen and all the one posthumously. I could hear the murmur in the crowd, and I know what it was about. Although I'm here, I may be a Sangoma, uh, Your Majesty. They were saying, like father, like son. Yes. Well, am I right or wrong? Yes. Right. So those of you who want to hire me in future, <laughs> I'm available at a fee. <laughs> Thank you very much. I now invite the chairman of the foundation to also make a presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, program director. It will be a miss of the foundation and the people of South Africa, if we do not do what I'm about to perform. The role and the contributions the Prince of Wapindangene has done in our country, in the continent, deserves an award. The Prince Mangosu Chubtelezi Foundation pays tribute to a visionary, principled leader, an elder statesman who has dedicated his life to the betterment of the people of African continent and the world at large. 
The foundation recognizes Prince Mangusu Tuptelezi as a beacon of strength and hope for generations to come. The foundation today expresses its deepest and sincere appreciation and gratitude to Prince Mangusu Tuptelezi for having made sacrifice of continued service to the nation by prioritizing public service, servant leadership, and his deep commitment to strong moral and ethical values. On behalf of the Prince Mangusu Tuptelezi Foundation, today I'm handing over this award to assure you, Shenge, of the Foundation's dedication to preserving your legacy in its diverse entirety and by safeguarding and promoting your philosophies and principles. Thank you very much uh, to the Chairman of the Foundation and to His Excellency for this presentation of well-deserved awards. We at that part of the program where I would like to kindly request my colleague, a fellow trustee and the CEO of the Foundation, and also one who was in the class of 1994 when we went to Parliament together, uh, Mr. Senjom Fayala, to move the vote of thanks. And as uh, Mr. Mfayala comes up, I will request the Honorable Princess Angela Butelezi to have herself in readiness uh, around the back for the last item of the day. Propose. Your turn. By it. Sangalum Shab Amakosi Onka Kona, Your Excellencies, Dr. Opasanjo, Your Excellency Davizita Sheng, The Excellencies, Diplomates, um, and all dignitaries that have honored this function. I am sent here by the board to express our sincere thanks to all of you for making this a special day. Um, but when you are amongst us, we feel our shoulders a bit higher. Our voices are a bit harder and louder. We walk with a spring on our steps. And now, 
after the words you've said here, we were just talking with some of my colleagues whether are we the right people to hear them. But again, President Opasanjo, Your Excellency, when we received the response to our invitation, we, don't, we didn't know whether to, to believe it or not. Um, it took about two days before we informed Mduana that we had responded because it was a, a daring act. Um, because we wanted to pitch this first um, lecture at what we believe is the correct level for Mduan. And the fact that the invitation reached your desk, sir, the fact that it was read, the fact that it was responded positively, is a huge joy for us in the foundation. After listening to your speech here, sir, we can only say, what a pleasure to sit at the master's feet. Um, we have a huge task as the foundation to carry on the work of Mdwan. And for that, we need encouragement and revival. Sitting at your feet here today, sir, was more than that. We thank you for all the work you've done in our continent and in the world towards the attainment of the one goal, the one goal, to make this world a better place for every girl child and every boy child, regardless of their race, regardless of their creed, regardless of the status of their parents. So you went on to quote uh, Mtuana's mentors, both Dr. Seme and Nkosul Tool. And you contextualize these words they said for us to, to, to be able to read them, not just as empty words. When Dr. Seme wrote these, the words that he did in 1906, he was coming out of a very bad conflict. His, he, was, he had just seen his life and everything that is important to him being pulled apart. Um, everything that he knew as normal was being destroyed. The spears were literally wet. But he dared to raise his eyes and see the Africa that he saw in that speech. Us as descendants and inheritors of that vision, are grateful to him for that. And Umduana keeps reminding us that um, that's why he is his mentor. As if that was not as if that was not enough, you went further saying quote in Kosul Tool. Umduana never ceased to teach us about Nkosul Tool. Again, the words he said. It was like sitting down reading those words. I can't imagine why would someone at that point of apathy think like that about society. He instructs us not only to work to destroy apathy. He instructs us to, to develop a new society, a new form of democracy that others can learn from. Now, these are big lessons for us, so, and we are grateful that you reminded us of them today and the responsibility we carry in our shoulders 
as descendants of these big sons of the soil. We can say a lot um, uh, and spend hours here today talking about you and what you mean to us. But I just first of all like to thank you, Ndavezita, for allowing us to use your name. Um, it's the biggest um, honor you could bestow on us. We are aware in the visit of the responsibility that comes with that. Um, we were shaking in our boots, for instance, in writing the letter to Dr. Obasanjo, and your name is in there. Whether we should speak to you first, or we should write the letter, um, because we are aware anything that has your name bears on us huge responsibility that should, we should handle with care all the time. We, can only, we cannot thank you for today only, sir. We thank you for, among other things, to be a great teacher to us. We will continue pursuing the lessons you have taught us. And we are always, always going to remember that ours is to work to make this world a better place. Our distinguished guests, we thank you very much for coming to spend time with us here today. We know that we had all sorts of things to do, but you prioritize this work. We would like to say to you, South Africans, fellow South Africans, this is not the end, but the beginning. Each one of us individually, or in cooperation with others, we have this task that in Kosi Ultuli instruct us never ever delegate to anyone else. It's our task to make this a better place. So the foundation would like to invite all of you to come, let's work together, let's never give up. Mtuana and the general spoke about hope. Let's find that hope within us and work together and build this place. If Dr. Seme could see that South Africa at the time where he saw it, if Ngosul Tuli could see that South Africa at the time when he saw it, that's a challenge to all of us to see that South Africa and seek it with everything we have, even though we've got huge challenges in this country. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much to our CEO for the thank yous. Uh, I would now like to invite Honorable Princess Angela Butelezi, who is a member of parliament in the National Assembly, to make a few announcements and thereafter we'll close in prayer. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Um, Program Director, His Majesty the King, Langalezwe, members of the Royal Family present, His Excellency Dr. Alessagund Obasanjo, our guest of honor, and His Excellency uh, Panju Kaunda, His Excellency the Prince of Kwapindangene, Dabezita, Their Excellencies the Ambassadors present, Amakosi present, with a special mention to Nkosi Pategile Holomisa, Dilizin Daba, and Nkosi Mandla Mandela, Member of Parliament, Zueli Velile, leaders of the faith present, distinguished guests, Kwapindangene, members, the members of the family of Kwapindangene, Nkunkulu Mamhale, 
uh, and the grand and the grand Mdwana's grandchildren present, Prince Bongimbumelelo and Prince Osintando Ngosi. Uh, distinguished guests, friends, all protocol observed. Um, program director, I beg for your indulgence to also take this opportunity to express our heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to the voice artist, um, Mr. Vugani Tele Magaye, for such a pristine, top quality and professional narration of the clips that were flighted at the, begin at the launch of the foundation last year, September, as well as at the beginning of today's uh, program. Honored, honored guests, as our time together draws, draws to a close, it is my task this afternoon to share all the closing announcements with you. First, may all the guests with the gold, gray, and green wristbands proceed to the cocktail room, which is adjacent to the hall, once the proceedings end. Regarding parking, there'll be parking vouchers available downstairs upon your departure. Please have your existing parking ticket ready to exchange with members of the ushering team. Also, upon your arrival, you might have noticed posters scattered throughout the foyer displaying a book cover with an image of His Excellency Mdonogo Pindangene. The book is not yet available to the public, but it's a project of the Butelezi Family Trust. So watch the space, we will keep you updated. In closing, let me encourage you to pay a visit to the Foundation's website at www.thebutelezifoundation.org.za. Here you will find a treasure trove of images of Prince Butelezi, as well as all the speeches from today's event and the foundation's launch, which was in September 2022. Thank you, Program Director. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Princess Angela Butelezi. And just to indicate as well, the forthcoming events will be the launch of the book. Uh, please, we, you will be invited when we're launching this very historic book. And also, we'll soon be opening our new, brand new offices of the foundation in 5 Mahatma Gandhi Road, which is near the end of the waterfront, where we're also going to have a mini museum, a mini replica of the museum that's in Ulundi. So you will also be invited to that function. It's work in progress at the moment, and, and it's going very, very well. Uh, having said that, may I kindly invite uh, oh, Reverend, uh, uh, the Honorable Reverend PLP Gumata, who is the moderator of the UCCSA KZN region, to close with prayer and benediction. Good. Thank you so much, Program Director. May I request that we all stand as we close this uh, event. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, Ma. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. And Omega, we worship you, Ma. Yes, you are worthy. We give you, we give you all, all the glory. We worship you. Yes, you are with him. Come, let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for making this day successful. We give you praise and honor for the life of His Royal Highness, Umduana Pindangene. 
We ask you, Father, to continue blessing him and keeping him in your arms. We thank you for his dedication and service to humanity. We pray a special blessing upon his family. Lord God, we also thank you for those who have contributed in making this day a success. Bless them, Lord, and keep them. We also commit to you our King, His Majesty the King, Mrs. Zulu Kazueltini, and the entire royal family. Bless everyone that is gathered here. Bless the families of our people that are gathered here. Let your face shine upon them. Lift your countenance upon them and be gracious to them. Lord, as we depart from this year, be with, from this place, be with us. May your angels go before us and clear the way so that we can reach home safely. We pray for all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us receive the benediction. Now to him is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen, 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 amen. And amen, 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 amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend Gumet. And as you are standing, may I kindly request that uh, the Honorable Deputy President, Nkosi Butelezi, leads His Majesty first, and everybody else, please wait. And they will be followed by His Excellency and, and, and his, the two Excellencies and the President and Prince Butelezi out there. And then everybody in the front row first should be allowed to go to the, uh, the room, and then we can all move in, those who have the appropriate tags. Thank you very, very much, everybody, for, for being here again and for being such a wonderful audience and participating in this function. Thank you. When I went Yeah, I'm gonna be 